Estonians. Today, we are going to have a virtual tour in the Sart Tourism Museum in Krakow, Poland. I have invited my friends who are tour guides as well. They will help us get a glimpse of the beautiful life story of Blessed Augustus. Let's go! You can see here the image of Blessed Augustus Sartorisky. My friend Ferd will tell you something about it. Augustus Sartorisky was born on August 2, 1858 in Paris, France. The firstborn son, Prince Ladislaus of Poland and Princess Maria Amparo, daughter of the Duke and Queen of Spain. Here is the photo of the noble family of Augustus. Arabella and Paul, can you share something about this one? The noble Santorisky family had been living in exile in France for almost 30 years. The number palace here with the hope of restoring unity in Poland. They continue to develop activities between their fellow Polish countrymen and the European Chancellery. It was already planned that Augusto would be a future reference point for this restoration and would carry on the Chateaurisky name. God's designs, however, were to unfold differently. Oh, how did it all turn out to be different? What happened to Augustus? Let's get to know about it through my friend Jesse. When Augusto was six, his mother died of tuberculosis. His disease was transmitted to, to him and for the rest of his life. He would plunge by ill health. Although he had to make forced pilgrimages with his father to Italy, Switzerland, Egypt, and Spain in search of a cure, he never regained his health. This is Augustus together with noble people. What is he doing here? Can you tell us something about this photo, Nigel? he grew up, Augusto felt that he was not meant for the life of nobility. And one day, when he was 20 years old, he wrote to his father, I confess to you that I am tired of all the parties. They are superficial entertainments that cause me anguish. And I feel myself forced to make acquaintances with others at these banquets. Wow! Imagine Augustus was indeed rich. He had everything. But then he thirsted for something more. Something more meaningful. I think the next photo would show us what he really wanted. Lian, care to share your knowledge about this photo? Augusto already received spiritual direction from his tutor, Joseph Kalinsowski, who would later become a Carmelite and who 
before leaving Carmel in 1877, wrote to Prince Ladislaus to suggest that it would be wise, considering the boy's love for God, to entrust him in the direction of Avis. Prince Ladislaus accepted the counsel given by Augustus Tutor and Father Stanislaus Kubowitz began to guide him. Augusto was already feeling more and more called to religious life and was hoping for a clearer indication of what God wanted from him. This decisive event took place when he was 25 and met Don Bosco, founder of the Salishians. Oh, I see. That's why we also have the image of our dear founder, St. John Bosco, here in the museum because he was very instrumental in the realization of Augustus' vocation. Can you further elaborate this one, my friends? When Don Bosco came to Paris and celebrated Mass in the family chapel of the Lambert Palace, Augusto saw in this holy founder and teacher the father of his soul and guide for his future. While Augustus remained quiet and brought in the first of the book so many, plans made from him by his father, his no intention of entering the noble life. Indeed, after his first encounter with the Salesian saint, he was more resolute than ever to answer God's call by becoming a Salesian. When his father gave him permission, Augusto would travel to Turin to meet with Don Bosco and participate in spiritual retreats. He became comfortable with the poverty of the Salesian Oratory and was not disturbed by his frequent ill health or his father's opposition. He instead took God's hand in all these circumstances. He would say, if God wants this, all will go well, since he can take away every obstacle. If he does not want this, then neither do I. Don Bosco was somewhat reluctant to accept Augusto into the Salvation community. It took Pope Leo the Thirteenth to remove his doubts when he gave Augusto this message. Tell Don Bosco that it is the Pope's will that he receives you among the Salvations. Well then, my dear son, I accept you from this moment. You are a part of the Salishan family and I desire that you belong here until you die. In 87, he began to meditate under the guidance of Don Kilio Barberis. The young man had to overcome habits and adjust to community life, schedule funeral meals and other sacrifices. All this he did with great serenity and abandonment to God. When his father came to try to convince him to return home and accept his nobility as prince, he refused. On 24 November 1887, the day of his fasting, in the hands of Don Bosco, the holy founder whispered into Augusto's ear, Courage, my prince! Today we have conquered, and I can also say with great joy that one day when you become a priest, you will do much for your country. Don Bosco died two months later, Augustus's health was also worsening, and his father continued to try to dissuade him from becoming a priest, using his ill health as an excuse. I was wondering what happened to Augustus after Don Bosco's death. I think these photos are somewhat related to that event. Ladislas asked the help of Cardinal Palucci to dismiss him from the solutions. Augusto wrote, In full liberty, I made my vows and I did this with great joy of heart. From that day, I continued to live in the congregation with an immense peace of spirit. And I thank the Lord for allowing me to leave the solution family and for having called me to become a solution. Decision and re announced his own dreams 
of prestige and nobility for Augusto. Father Augustus died on 8 April 1893 in Alasio, where he lived his years as a priest, occupying a room which looked out into the courtyard where children of the oratory played. He was 35 years old. Wow! That was a very meaningful virtual tour at the Sartorisky Museum. I am amazed by the story of Prince Augustus, who was very courageous in choosing to follow Jesus, even if this entailed sacrifice. We too are bound to make decisions that would challenge us whom to follow. When that time comes, let us ask God to grant us the grace to be courageous like Blessed Augustus and firmly decide to follow His Son, Jesus.